Howdy y'all, it's Cody from the Keepers of Nerddom. How you doing? I thought, let's just talk about why is Fallout 3 so amazing and why does it re- deserve to be... <sighs> have a remake done for it. Why does it res- deserve to have a remake? Not a uh, not a remake, no, a remaster. Aha. Because it, it, I don't think it deserves a remake of fixing things and changing things drastically. I think more so it just needs a remaster with some small changes that would still make it just a remaster. But first off, why is Fallout 3 so amazing? Well, playing back through, and you'll see some video gameplay right now, of the Robco facility, with the goal being to hack into the computer terminal in the heart of Robco to take control over the robots that are in the area and tell them to be on pest maintenance only. And it's this funny thing because some of the the quote-unquote tutorial missions on very hard mode are still hard because one of them sends you into a Mirelurk nest. And Mirelurks on very hard are not tutorial-style creatures at all. Like, they're just not. And then you go into this area, and what you're facing is rad roaches and mole rats. But I was going around every corner going, "Uh uh-oh, am I going to run into a raider? or a super mutant, or a robot that's haywire, and nothing quite like that until you turn on the mainframe, and it's funny because a Protectron is right in the room, and he'll just start blasting you immediately as soon as you turn on the mainframe, and then you can hack the mainframe further and go, okay, whoa, 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 maintenance mode only, kill pests, not anything else. Take care of the, the stuff that's wandering around this area. It's, it's a neat thing. It's, it's really pretty cool to, to see how it works. Like, in a way, it was like one of the more boring buildings I went into. Um, but I think at the same time, it wasn't because the mystery of what was going on in here and the fact that it was so far southwest than most of the places I had been at times that I was expecting really high difficulty. And so actually the surprise more so was just, here's a building with very little in it. Unless, you know, if you didn't have the hacking stuff on, all of a sudden you'd have Protectrons that go active and go crazy in their attacking of you. Now, thankfully I, that's like one of my first things I always max out is repair, hacking, um, science, I guess, and then lock picking, whatever that skill is tied to that. Because I just want to make sure I can always access things so I don't have to come back to an area once I'm done exploring, because then it's really boring. I'm going all the way back down into the dungeon just to go to that one box that was very hard, master lock kind of deal. Like, no thank you. I have no desire to relive this and actually the boring parts of it. So, it's, it's a fascinating journey in this game and it reminded me of a a earlier piece of the game where there was ghouls in this this area and you get further and further in only to find out that there's one scientist and for some reason the scientist spawned in my game with a missile launcher which is always terrifying especially on very hard mode because all it takes is one really good shot maybe two thankfully I was equipped with decent armor by that point I believe but that's always the mystery of you go into even some of these small little crazy random spots in the game only to discover something amazing and epic and random and nutty and fun and like I I went into a grocery store and realized after I had explored the whole thing that I had to reload the autosave just to see it because the the entire grocery store was designed not as actually a trap but actually as a a fun prank that there was a pressure plate that it had arrows pointing to it literally in the game going step on this and I realized it was actually like a uh, whatever those pointless machines are that just do something really silly and funny and it like knocked over boxes made a baseball machine go off that then made grenades explode that then set the back of the building on fire and explosions in the back and so you just stood on this plate and watched this all happen and it was just really fun and just interesting and Man, also another thing that it drives you crazy, but also it's really good, is the fact that equipment gets damaged as it's used as far as weaponry. 
So you have to keep a supply on you of other weapons. So if you like a silenced 10 millimeter pistol, you have to keep 10 millimeter pistols on you or silenced 10 millimeter pistols to repair them. So it's it's a management system. And they did away with that in Fallout 4, but then they added all the, the modding stuff. So I, it's kind of that give and take, right? It's There's good and bad. And I think the good of modding is awesome, but I think losing the condition stuff as much as it annoys me, I think it also adds to the reality of you're, you're working with equipment that's barely functional. That's why it's interesting when you go into Operation Anchorage and you don't have to worry about it because it's, it's just everything functions and is brand new, so they just basically give you perfect equipment that doesn't degrade in the same way that other stuff does. I think it, it may degrade, but it has like so many hit points that you'll never notice it. This is, this is the good stuff of Fallout 3. But, wow, uh, replaying it though, sometimes my eyes really struggle with focusing on things because you start to realize just the graphics of today versus the Xbox 360. You get used to it after playing it, and I'm fine, but at the same time, there's moments where I look away after a little bit and I go, wow, my eyes are trying to focus on something and there's not enough graphical stuff there to see the, the graphics just aren't there, but you can, like, your your mind is trying to put something in there, like, the, just a rock wall, and, and you, you go, the graphics just aren't quite there, but there's a texture, and your eyes are trying to make sense of it, and it can't quite, it's just interesting. So, why does it need a remaster? I think that there's, there's two main things that it would really help with, is just graphics, just the, the have graphically more scenic things. Um, I hate even saying it like that, but just the, that the graphics would be improved. I think that's the big thing that it really needs to, and just let you still play the game as is for the most part. And the only other thing too to deal with graphics is the the coloring. Is in replaying it and starting to realize it's there's a drabness to it, but you kind of understand it. And it makes sense that it would be drab. It's it's a post-apocalyptic world that's barely holding on. And it makes sense that it would be broken. It makes sense that it would barely be functional. It makes sense that things would not look very good. So I think what it really needs is just, as far as a remaster, you know, obviously fix any bugs that might still exist, but... It's, it's just higher graphics quality and add some a little bit more color saturation to things just to give your eyes more to look at at times, what I think would just help. And it's, but it, like I said, it's just, it's really minor in a way, but it's so good. It's such a good game. Fun to replay and just go on this adventure through the, the wastelands and... I tell you what, though, combat shotguns, my goodness, they degrade fast. That's, uh, that's the thing you have to just keep in mind. You're like, okay, I've got to carry, like, seven or eight different types of weapons and some duplicates to repair because if I use this weapon, it's going to fall apart really fast. And I think that's, uh, it's a key detail in the game that you have to be very conscious of. That's why I'm really looking forward to playing Mothership Zeta again because then you can get some items from there that just... It's a alien epoxy, I believe, that just repairs a weapon. And it's super handy. Super, super handy stuff. So then you can just have that instead of uh, duplicate weapons for everything all the time. And then repair sometimes weapons that you can't find duplicates of. Really neat. It's really good stuff. Uh, just so much fun in, in the leveling system and getting those extra little perks that help you in different ways. Like right now I'm just got a, what was the perk I just got? There was one that was like 10 points of energy resistance, rad resistance and uh, something else. And it wasn't much, but it's like, okay, just having extra protection is not a bad thing on very hard mode. It's just not, um, It's always a good idea to have a little extra because of how insane the game gets so fast. But yeah, it, I think 
Fallout 3 deserves a remaster. You know, I'd love to see Fallout 5. I think we should get a Fallout 3 remaster. We should get a New Vegas remaster. Fallout 4, not quite yet, but yet. Someday. That'd be good. And is there something else maybe that I would improve or change? I don't know. Maybe some of the, the durability is going up a little bit, maybe? I don't know. That'd be the minor thing. But overall, the... There's, there's just so much there. Actually, it's funny. I, I found myself just recently in a vault in the game that it's like my least favorite vault, Vault 106. That's just all about hallucinogenic uh, stuff in the air. And you see visions and stuff, but the visions aren't very good. They're just kind of weird. And they don't like tell you an interesting story or you dealing with your emotions or feelings about stuff. It's weird. It, it just doesn't quite... It just doesn't quite work, but it's it's even in the moments where the game is not great, it's still like leaps and bounds above so many other games. It's kind of amazing because even in that vault, I was still having some fun because of the things I was discovering and the items. So I mean, that's my favorite thing is just dumpster diving through the game to find the the pretty interesting random items that are hidden behind. X, Y, and Z, so, yeah, and plus, Fallout 3 also has the repellent stick that makes mole rats explode, because why not, yeah, what's, uh, what's your favorite part about Fallout 3, what's your, what's your favorite thing about it, what's your favorite, like, weapon to use, mine personally, oh, that's, that's actually hard to think about, um, I always like the Science 10 mil pistol, just, as a good, simple thing, but then you get the combat shotgun and you realize this is just insane. And you realize the assault rifle, it's it hits hard, but it's just inaccurate. It frustrates you. Goss rifle's just awesome. Man, what do I say about that? That's, that's harder than I would think. What's the answer? Um, I don't know. What would be the answer to that? Uh, laser pistol. That's it. Duh. I love the laser pistols. Always laser pistol. You get some pretty nice named ones later on. No, laser pistol is where it's at. That's exactly what I would say. I just always enjoy it. It doesn't hit the hardest, but it's just a fun weapon. So what's your favorite weapon in Fallout 3? What's your favorite part about Fallout 3? Favorite side quest or mission? Um... I, I just, I love so much of those, exploring just the most random building in the game, and lo and behold, you find 37 things beyond it inside this building, or a little story through, well, I just, last night I was, I was in some tunnels, just a metro station area, one of them, and got into these tunnels, and there was a guy that had been apparently experimenting with mole rats meat to try and make it more edible and then you find he has a machine down here which I'm not ever going to go back down there to, to make this stuff but it's like the equivalent of ice cold nuka cola in the game of crazy powerful health like 24 hit points right off the bat and that's I don't know if medicine being upgraded will help that stat you know being healed from that or not we'll see but it was crazy like here's this random thing and then there was a non-hostile mole rat in a cage called Pumpkin that this guy uh, Riley Briggs or something was his name I don't know it was really random and he's like you're more than just a raider because you're obviously a smart guy but here you are still psychotic trying to attack me instead of just let's work out a deal or something you know it's just interesting uh, I love that like these are the storytelling things that New Vegas does too and Fallout 4 does too and, and whenever they're they're hitting these things and you can just get lost down in a, a subway in the story of this random stuff just by reading some notes on computers and then running into the person or what's left of the person, right? It's, it's a beautiful thing. The, this is the journey of Fallout, is telling you a story that's happened over 200 years while your crew of people is down in a vault. Or, in New Vegas case, you're out working and now you just don't remember what happened anyway i've been cody from keepers nerd and thank you so much for hanging out with me like share and subscribe take care y'all bye
target identified. Oh. Oh. Your safety. Oh. along Serve you, master.
Dad says not to talk to strangers. Fiddle with any interesting... Harnessing the... Well, they're only human. Or, uh, seems like... Yes. Books are where the... See if it's still there. Great. If you can't get those, then even the card catalog would be useful.